Hey guys, welcome back to another TechDep uh, PC build video. Uh, today we're going to be showing you how we assemble uh, our brand new uh, super high-end top tier gaming PC called the Dark Matter. Uh, this is comprised of a i9-14900K, uh, 64 gigabytes of DDR5, a two terabyte uh, NVMe SSD on a Z690 uh, ITX motherboard from ASUS. Uh, we also have an AMD RX 7800 XT uh, and this configuration ordered from one of our customers. Uh, it's configurable all the way up to a RTX 4090 uh, or, or AMD's top tier offering, uh, the RX 7900 XTX, whichever you prefer. Uh, this is gonna be housed in our uh, preferred case, the Thermal Take, uh, the Tower 300. Uh, it's a really interesting case. It's really well designed, uh, especially for cooling, uh, and it's visually pleasing. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. If you guys are looking to pick up your own Dark Matter, we're going to have it linked in the description below, uh, or of course, available at techdep.com. So since this is a gaming PC, uh, we went with one of the top uh, performers in the i9. 14900 kf uh, this processor is among the top performers in every game this is also a really good uh workload processor if you're doing video editing 3d rendering anything like that uh, this is a dual purpose machine but it's mostly a gaming focus that's why we chose this processor uh, to put that processor in uh, we went with the rog strix z690 itx gaming wi-fi motherboard uh, this is a compact motherboard, which is what we need for the case we chose. Uh, it's also fully feature set, even though it's in a small form factor. Uh, coming with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and of course, uh, DDR5 support and support for the latest 14th gen Intel processors. Uh, for storage, we went with a 2 terabyte NVMe SSD. Uh, this is more than fast enough for loading your games, boot up times, anything like that. It's also got a ton of storage. And for RAM, we went with 64 gigabytes of Team Group uh, T-Force Delta RGB. Uh, this is a 6,000 megahertz kit uh, with CL34 timings. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and assemble these. So we're gonna start by unboxing the motherboard and getting it ready for the CPU. And under the motherboard here, there's gonna be a bunch of accessories. We have our Wi-Fi antennas here, which we're gonna take out for later. We also have SATA cables, if we're using any SATA drives. Uh, we have RGB splitters right here. Uh, this is a very important little package, this one here. Uh, this is actually another small internal I.O. board uh, that we do have to install on our motherboard in order to get everything working. So make sure you take this small box out, box out if you're using this motherboard or any asus high-end board it does have one of these little uh, daughter boards and we have some other misc accessories like a keychain some zip ties uh, and then of course the documentation so we're going to put the rest of this away for now we're going to attack our motherboard now we're going to go ahead and get our i9 out uh, so the LGA1700 socket supports Intel processors from 12th gen all the way to 14th gen, uh, just with different BIOS revisions in order to go ahead and use the chips. Uh, you can use something from a Z690 on a 14th gen, uh, or of course 12th, 13th, anything like that, or a Z790 is backwards compatible all the way to 12th gen if you want to use that. All right, so you're gonna notice once you open up your CPU, there's gonna be a small little diamond or triangle right down here where my pinky is. And then on the motherboard, uh, there's also gonna be one, you're just gonna match those up. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the CPU socket. We're gonna match up where our triangles were and drop our CPU in. and just give it a little wiggle to make sure it's seated. Now we're gonna close up our socket. And there we are, that's our CPU installed. 
Uh, we're going to move on to the SSD next. Uh, one quick note, you do want to keep this in your motherboard box if your motherboard is defective or has issues in the future. In order to RMA it and get it serviced, uh, you are going to need to return the board with this little socket cover on. If you don't, they will void your warranty. So make sure you hang on to that. We're going to go ahead and open up our two terabyte SSD now. We're going to use a Phillips screwdriver in order to remove this screw and this screw here. And the first thing we're going to do is peel off this thermal pad cover here. And then we're gonna go ahead and pop our SSD out of the protective tray and install it. It is keyed, it will only go in one way. And we're gonna go ahead and close the toolless installation mechanism ASUS uses and peel off the second thermal pad cover on the top side and reinstall this cover. before we install our RAM, we're actually going to go ahead and install the back plate for our CPU cooler. So for our CPU cooler, we went with the deep cool uh, 360 mil AIO, the LS720SE. Uh, this is going to have some nice RGB as well as keep our Core i9 very cool under any load. So opening the cooler up, we're not going to need everything you see in this box here the only thing we're going to need right now is this little brown box that contains our mounting hardware so the rest of this we can set aside for now so inside this little brown box is all of our mark mounting hardware and instructions so this is going to be our back plate and this is going to be all of our sorted hardware Now they are labeled, if not on the bag, they're labeled in the menu card here, or the manual card. Uh, so if you're using Intel or AMD, you're gonna wanna reference this and make sure you select the correct mounting hardware. So for LGA 1700, we're gonna need the Intel backplate and these stock are usually clipped in on the inside section. You have to just pull these all the way out like so on all four sides. Uh, that's our back plate. So we're gonna go ahead and install this guy here just by feeding it through the back. And we're gonna lay our board down with the back plate now. And there are different standoffs here. So these little plastic standoff washers, you're gonna look for the ones that say 1700. So this is a 1700 one here in my left hand. This is a LGA uh, 15X. Uh, so as you can see, the ones we're looking for have the notches and the smooth ones are for LGA 15X. So that's going to be 1155, 1151, uh, and also LGA 1200. So that's our standoffs installed. Uh, we do now have to put these brackets on our CPU cooler using the included hardware, and then we can mount our CPU cooler uh, to the motherboard here. Okay, so we've got our CPU cooler here. We're gonna go ahead and open up this hardware bag as well. And what we're looking for are these four screws here. We're gonna turn the pump over. We do have to take the protective cover off. Make sure you don't touch the thermal paste. Now we're gonna lay our brackets on just like that on both sides. And we're gonna take the four included screws and secure the brackets down. So these screws will bottom out. You just wanna make sure that they're fully bottomed out and tightened on. Once that's done, we can now go ahead and install the cooler on our motherboard here. So we're just gonna line up our cooler on the standoffs and set it down. Should just slot right on these, perfect. And now we're gonna take our screws and thread them on. 
But you do want to do this slowly in a cross pattern to make sure you get even pressured. I like to go through and hand tighten these first. After I get them hand tightened, I'll go through and tighten them with the screwdriver again. So I like to go hand tight all around first with the screwdriver. And after I get them all hand tight, I'll go a quarter turn past that just to make sure everything is making proper and full contact. All right, and now all we have to do is open up our RAM slot on the top side here. And make sure we line up the notch with the notch on the motherboard and click our RAM down in. And repeat that process for the second stick. And that's our motherboard fully installed and ready for installation. Uh, the only thing we have left to do is go ahead and wire our CPU pump. And then we're gonna wire the fans as well that go on our radiator right here. So since our motherboard has limited fan headers, we're gonna be using this fan splitter here. It takes one PWM signal here and splits it into three. Two of those are gonna be, actually three of those are gonna be for the each 120 mil fans that go on this cooler here. So we're gonna go ahead and take uh, this pump header fan here and plug it into the one labeled CPU optional slash pump. And then our three-way splitter, we're gonna plug into the PWM for CPU fan. Okay, so this secondary header here is actually for RGB. Uh, this is going to be a five volt. So we're going to have to run this guy all the way over here and plug it in right below our SSD. We're gonna go ahead and cable manage this the best we can to get it out of the way. And before we forget, after we've managed this cable here, we're gonna take our front uh, IO, additional RGB header, uh, and everything on this daughter board here and plug it in. So you'll notice at the front of the board, there's two type C headers here, and then there's two type C uh, receivers here. We're just going to go ahead and plug it in. And there we are. Okay, so since we're going to be mounting uh, this as an exhaust on the radiator, uh, that means the fans are going to be facing this way. We're going to install all these on the front side using uh, the longer screws here. These just go through the fans that secure to the radiator. And then once we go to mount the radiator fan combo in the case, we're going to use the smaller included ones uh, through the back side and into our case. All right, and with our fans installed, we're now gonna take uh, our splitter that's plugged into our CPU fan header here and plug it into each one of these PWM uh, cables running off of the fans. Okay, it's gonna look like a mess of wires real quick here. Uh, we also then have to take the three ARGB headers here and daisy chain them together. So we're gonna start with the top one here. We're gonna plug this end into the one running off of the motherboard. Then we're gonna take the jumper here, the splitter, and plug it into our second fan. 
and repeat that same process for the bottom fan here. And that's all of the fans wired as well as all the RGB wired uh, for our CPU cooler fans. And then of course the RGB on our RAM is just built into them and it's gonna be all controlled by our motherboard here by uh, using ASUS Aura Sync. We're gonna go ahead and peel off all the protective uh, coverings on the motherboard. Don't forget the one on the rear here where the IO shield is. And now we're gonna go ahead and prepare the case for our motherboard and graphics card and then power supply installation. Okay, so we've got our case all prepared here. I went ahead and pulled off the top cover as well as the front glass cover and the two side mesh panels here. Uh, we're gonna start by removing all the accessories that come tied in the case here, this cable tie. So in this little package here, uh, this is gonna come with a bunch of block off plates as well as our uh, SFX power supply mounting plate. Uh, we're not gonna use too, too many of those covers today. Honestly, what we're looking for is this little bag here. So this contains all the screws we're gonna need to install all of our hardware in here. Uh, and since we're gonna be starting with the uh, motherboard, we're gonna go ahead and take out all of these that you see here. And it is labeled in the manual, reference the manual if you're not too, too sure. Uh, but it does label which ones are motherboard specific screws here, as well as power supply, case fans, uh, accessories, things like that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab the motherboard cables, or sorry, screws out of this one. Okay, so we've got our screws ready. And since this is an ITX motherboard, we're only gonna be using the ITX standoffs, uh, which means you can actually go ahead and take off uh, the two at the bottom here uh, with the included tool. Or if you don't have one, uh, we will have those available in the description below or at techdep.com. And again, if you guys are looking for any parts or tools, I will have them linked in the description below as, as well as available at techdep.com. We're gonna go ahead and remove these two bottom uh, standoffs. Like I said, if you're using a micro ATX motherboard, which is the max size, uh, this case, the Tower 300 uh, accepts, you will leave the bottom two in. If you're using an ITX board, go ahead and take those out. Uh, there are additionally, a two on the right hand side here that are from micro ATX. I do recommend removing those as well, which we're gonna go ahead and do right now. And now we're ready to install our motherboard as well as CPU cooler. So we're gonna go ahead and slot the CPU cooler in first. All right, now that we've got the CPU cooler roughly in place, we are going to go ahead and line up the motherboard. Uh, on this particular case, the IO is gonna point at the top with the 24 pin header at the bottom. Then for now, we're just gonna rest it down until we get our CPU cooler secured to its bracket, which again, we're gonna be using the small screws through the backhand side here. And with our cooler fully installed, now we're gonna go ahead and line up our motherboard with the standoffs. And it can be difficult, but of course, now we're gonna go ahead and screw them in. So that's our motherboard installed. We're gonna go ahead and tuck this wiring away the best we can. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and install our power supply and then our graphics card. And with all of our uh, CPU cooling, RGB wires, and uh, fan wires all cable managed, we are now all set to install the power supply cables. So we're not gonna install the power supply, but we're gonna make it easier for ourselves uh, by pre-routing the 24 pin and eight pin uh, CPU power connectors. Uh, we're also gonna go ahead and then wire the front panel connectors, front panel USB, uh, Type-C and audio 
headphone jack, uh, the cables that run down here, and this step as well. Okay, so we've got our eight pin EPS power cable right here for the power uh, CPU and our 24 pin uh, motherboard power supply cable right here. Uh, just a few things to go over while we're plugging these in. Uh, we went with the Tower 300 case uh, just because it provides great cooling uh, and great compatibility with really, really high-end components while also offering a smaller footprint. We wanted to design a PC uh, that's not going to take up your entire desk, but it's also going to look great uh, and, of course, perform great. Uh, and we went with this Asus Z690 uh, dash I ITX motherboard uh, because it's a really, really capable, powerful motherboard with a lot of IO expandability and a very small form factor. Uh, so you're not compromising in anything really, and you are able to fully utilize your i9. Uh, so it's hard to see. Maybe I can tilt the case for you guys here. Uh, but right here on this little connection, right here is going to be right down in there where we plug in our CPU 8 pin uh, EPS power. All right, so now that we've got those all plugged in, we're gonna wire them in the back and get them all organized. But in the time being, we're gonna go ahead and we take our front IO cables, run them through the cutout here, and then plug them in. Okay, so we've got our 24 pin and eight pin uh, rerouted and cable managed in the back. So now we're gonna go ahead plug in our HD audio, just going to go over here on the right hand side. We're going to run that cable like so, kind of near where the graphics card plugs in, but we'll make sure we manage it out of the way. Uh, there is one dead pin, so one blank pin uh, that's going to line up with the other blank pins. Uh, if it's not going incorrect, make sure you have the blank pins aligned correctly. It should just slot directly in. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and plug in our uh, front panel USB 3.0 header. Uh, it's going to go in this big guy right here. It's keyed. So if you look here on the top, there's a little notch. Line it up with the notch on the motherboard and it should slot right in. This is a delicate connector. So if it's not lining up right, don't force it in. You will bend or break some pins directly next to it. Uh, is going to be our USB Type-C 3.1 or 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C header. Uh, this is also keyed. It's only going to click in one way, just like that. It'll click in real nice. Now we have our front panel connector that's going to go right here. Again, one dead pin, as you can see here. Uh, there is one pin that is just completely filled in. It's going to go in just like so. So that is the front panel of our case all done and wired up. And all we have left to do now is install our graphics card and then our power supply. So for graphics card here, we went with the ASUS Dual uh, AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT. Uh, our client wanted this uh, specifically for their games, the games they play. Uh, they are AMD based titles, so they tend to perform better. Uh, titles like Call of Duty are mainly what our clients looking to play. So this is a perfect match. Uh, we do also offer NVIDIA offerings. Uh, it just depends on the customer, the games they play, and the workloads they're looking to complete, but we offer those as well. So before we install our graphics card, we're going to go ahead and remove our PCIe slots here. Uh, we're going to remove the first two as this is a two slot card. We're going to make sure we open up uh, this little finger here. Slide our card in and click it in. There we are. That's our graphics card all installed. Uh, we do also, of course, have to reinstall the rear screws right here that hold our graphics card in place. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And another benefit of this case, uh, right here, right in front of the graphics card, uh, is fresh, clean air. 
Uh, so it's able to keep itself really cool, run quiet, and of course, increase your FPS. While we're here, we're gonna go ahead and get two eight pin uh, VGA power supply connections and go and connect these to the graphics card. You could use a singular one with a jumper. I prefer to use two clean ones, uh, but as you can see, most of these cables on power supplies will come with two connections on one. And again, if you guys are interested in any custom PC build, uh, we don't build just pre-builts that we have available on our website. We'll build anything for you, uh, whether that be workstation, a server, a gaming PC, anything you're looking for, uh, we've got you covered. Uh, check out the links below in the description or check us out at techdep.com to learn more. All right, so let's cable manage uh, these VGA cables and then install our power supply. All right, so we're on the back side here to install our power supply. Uh, there are one, two, three, and four screws. Three and four screws here that we have to remove to get this bracket off, uh, which then we're gonna install the power supply onto this bracket, plug all the cables in, and then slide it into this receptacle and secure the plate. Okay, so here's our power supply. Uh, we went with the Gigabyte UD1000GM uh, PCIe 5.0 Rep2. Uh, this is a standard unit for all dark matter configurations. We do offer different configurations with different graphics cards and processors. The reason why we choose this power supply is from a reputable brand. Uh, it's 80 plus gold, it's a thousand watts, and importantly, got PCI 5.0 for our 4090s, 4080 configurations. Uh, so we're going to flip this unit over and install the bracket. Looks like it's only going to install one way. So there is a orientation uh, that is by design for this power supply inside the case. All right. And with this bracket now installed, it's ready to go back in the case. Uh, you can install it this way with the fan facing up. So we'll be pulling air from the case and exhausting it, or you can install it upside down where the fan is pulling cool, fresh air in from the bottom, of course, unless you're on carpet and exhausting it right back out. Kind of its own ecosystem, not competing with or grabbing any air inside the case. Uh, this is usually the way I prefer to mount power supplies, uh, just because again, it kind of keeps it uh, in its own little ecosystem there. It doesn't really interfere or interact with anything going on inside the case. All right, so back to the case. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab all the cables here. So we're gonna start with our eight pin uh, GPU connector. Make sure we have our eight pin EPS and our 24 pin just as a sanity check. And now we're gonna plug these in to their respective places. They're all labeled on the power supply. And once we have all those plugged in, we can now slide the power supply into place. And once we've got it in place, we can now take those four screws we originally took out to get the bracket and then secure them into the case. Uh, we do have a little bit of cable management to do back here. It's not too, too bad, thankfully. Uh, but after screwing this power supply in, we will get it all cable managed and make sure everything works. Our dark matter gaming PC, uh, of course, is at the side panels, which I'll throw on in a minute here. Uh, but let's go ahead and give it power. And one of these is the power button. Looks like it's that one. And turn it on. All right, everything looks good. We've got our top intake fan spinning. We've got our RAM lit up, both of them. Of course, our CPU fans are going. We're gonna go ahead and peel off our Deep Cool logo there. And yeah, that wraps up today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you wanna see more PC builds like this, uh, we have IT videos coming soon, as well as some cybersecurity stuff in the works. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and pick up your very own dark matter pc today uh or browse the rest of our pc category uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode